Hey, welcome back. It seems like I bought another CNC router. I already had this, this easel um, mini flat router for quite some time now and it paid multiple times for itself. I do really a lot of work on it. And I was looking in to get a router that is a little bit more sturdy. Um, that's more capable of cutting aluminium and also steel. And a week ago or a few days ago, I got the opportunity to look at a batch of tools and machines and there was this machine sitting. This is a, a Stepmore's SM4040 CNC router. And after some talking, I bought it for, um, for a fair price, let's say it that way. Um, it has 400 by 400 millimeter travel, uh, 150 in C axis. And while the easel machine over there, that's a traveling gantry machine, like, like a Datron M10 Pro or something like that. This is a traveling table machine. It's, it's basically a bridge style machine or a fixed gantry. That means this, this uh, bridge over here, uh, here, this is fixed in position, this doesn't move. On this machine, the table moves. That means that the gantry itself and the columns it's sitting on can be designed and built way more rigid. Um, there are a lot of advantages to a, 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 to a fixed gantry machine, but also drawbacks. For example, you need a lot more space. When I move the table of this machine, to its extreme outer end, it, it overhangs quite a bit. So. Basically, the machine bed would have to be way larger than the machine. They have a relatively small machine base because they have a the the guide weighs only that long. Uh, rapids are currently rapids are currently set to three thousand millimeters per minute, but I'm going to I will check if I can tweak that. And the whole frame of this machine, all this, this, the, the bridge itself, the C-axis and the base and the table, this is all cast aluminum. It's all castings, it's bolted together and it's, it's surprisingly rigid. It's not a crazy heavy machine, it's 150 kilograms. We were able to lift it um, as a two-man team up here on the table. Um, works fine. It has a 2.2 kilowatt spindle, runs up to 24,000 RPM and it is water-cooled. Currently I'm running it without uh, without the pump or any liquid in it and I'm, I'm monitoring the temperature of the spindle but I need to get a new pump. The, this is a used machine and the pump and the, the water in it were pretty crusty. So get rid of that. Uh, ER20 collet system so it can hold tools up to 12 millimeters. It came with a very nice set of, of Farion precision collets. And it's running on Mach 3 currently. It's hooked up through an ESS smooth stepper via Ethernet to the computer which is running Windows 7. And the output from the smooth stepper goes into the controller here with the um, with all the the stepper drives and the drive for the spindle the VFD. So let's let's look at, take a little bit closer look at this thing. So currently it's set up with two precision grinding vices on the table. Uh, this is a, a, a two vice pallet. It, it has a steel subplate that I made quite some time ago and it bolts right onto the table here. Um, I would prefer it to have it uh, 90 degrees to the axe travel but the bolt hole pattern does not match up. So currently it's that way. Let's see what I'm doing about that. The machine is set up for flood cooling which, which is really odd. 
Um, the whole table, this this cast aluminum table, has this this sheet metal tub around it. It's surrounding it and it's building a vat uh, that has a, a, a drain back here. And you can run flood coolant on this guy. So it, it's, it has already the lock line with a, with a small valve. Just needs a pump and a, a, a container, a coolant reservoir. And then you can run this your CNC router with flood cooling. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that. I'm probably sticking something like a, a minimum quantity lubrication system on it. But that's all. I'm. We will see. Currently, I'm quite happy. Um, I had to do quite a bit of tramming to this machine um, to get the x-axis that's side to side of the spindle square to the y-axis and also the spindle trammed at the same time. Uh, took quite a bit of, <laughs> of unbolting and bolting stuff back together. But these machines are built in China. This is completely China. And I think they are sold only through, through Alibaba. Um, here in Europe or Germany, we do not have a, a reseller for those machines, as far as I can tell. Um, if you Google Step Moors, you will find this machine, Step Moors SM4040. Um, it has these nice bellows. So it, the slideways behind it are reasonably protected. And we will rip one out and I'll show you the slideways. That's, by the way, the homing sensor, homing switch. That's an inductive sensor that's, that's reacting to steel. You can see by the red, red light up there when it's tripped. So these work usually quite well, but with steel chips you have to be careful. They can mistrip. It has homing sensors, also reacts. So the machine always knows where it is after you turn it on. So if we rip the the bellow out. Uh, you can see the, the ball screw here and the, the 15 millimeter. Yeah, it's not a heaving. <laughs> That's a PMI slide. It says PMI made in Taiwan on the slideway. Um, I can't check if that's true, but maybe. So that's, that's the ball screw. This moves the, the, the X axis. And up here is are the precision linear rails. This is very nice. Linear rails are really the way to go on a CNC router. So let's get this bellow back in. A very simple bellow design. I like this. Um, easy to replace when they get damaged. And better than nothing. The, the slideways, the bearing blocks on these slides have wipers, but if you're nice to your bearing blocks, they will last longer. So try not to uh, dust them up too much. <laughs> so I did a test cut in O2 tool steel with a four flute carbide end mill, two millimeter diameter. I cut the seven by seven millimeter pocket and had the end mill cut a radius here on t on the top edge. This is a I think it's a two millimeter radius with a 50 micron step down. The end mill I'm using has a 0.2 millimeter corner radius, so it gives a nice blended radius here. And I'm really surprised by the surface finish I get. the the moving the moving table and fixed gantry combination is really way stiffer than my easel CNC router that has a traveling gantry. It's kind of obvious if you look at it. You have three axes moving off one axis and with a fixed gantry you, you're only moving two axes at a maximum from one joint. <laughs> and in overall a fixed gantry can be made much stiffer and much more solid. That's probably the reason why I get this very decent finish in steel. 
Um, well, let's cut another one so you can see it. Four fluid ML running at 18,000 RPM and I'm feeding it um, in the XY plane at 600 and something millimeters per minute. So we're going at a decent speed. The adaptive clearing in the beginning is uh, one millimeter depth of cut. And there we go, that was seven minutes to, to rough it out and to the finishing with 50 micron step over in C depth. I'm still a little bit annoyed that Fusion 360 cannot do, um, that you cannot set a surface roughness and it calculates the, the, the step down automatically. Uh, other cam packages, for example, Pro Engineer and Creo do that without a problem. Yeah, yeah, I know. Creo costs about 15 times as much. So, as you can see, it doesn't look too shabby. And while running this machine is not exactly quiet, the, the cut in overall sounded very decent. It also has this funny sea uh, height probe. This is basically just an, a piece of steel with an insulator on the back and it's connected to the controller. And the way this works is you place this on your work and the spindle will move down slowly once you hit uh, touch C height in the control software. And when it makes contact due to um, uh, continuity. It's basically a, an electric continuity tester through this block and through the cable to the controller. Uh, then it will know the C height of this face here. In the control software, the thickness of this block is a variable. It's set there, and the software set automatically C zero to the height of your part. So if we drop this on here hold it firmly in place, that doesn't squirm around, and we hit touch on C, it will move slowly down, touch off, retract, and then do it again. And doing it again at the slower feet. That's a, that's a very low-tech way to touch off C height but it's very fast and reasonably accurate. You won't do this with a, with a very high-end end mill because the chances of, of damaging the end mill are, they exist. <laughs> so let's try something else. This is a piece of hardened tool steel. Uh, should be around 55 to 60 Rockwell C. And the end mill I have in this spindle can cut hardened materials, so why not? Well, that worked surprisingly well. Doesn't sound too terrible. I was running 15,000 RPM and the feed of 600 millimeters per minute. So let's try something else. Okay, let's see if we can cut the same contour that we did before in, in unhardened tool steel in this piece of hardened steel. It has already a center hole, which is nice that we don't, so we don't have to plunge into tool steel, hardened tool steel.
Well, that worked way better than it should have done. <laughs> that were the same speeds and feeds that I was using on the soft tool steel. Um, but with hard milling and small end mills, the difference is not that big between the speeds and feeds for hard and soft. Uh, depth of cut is relatively is, is smaller on hard materials. So, doesn't look doesn't look terrible um, I have seen worse finishes <sighs> oh yeah this is by the way an old uh, precision um, key for a, for a machine table and yes this is hard this is reasonably hard Okay, that's a close-up of the finish I got. Uh, as you can see, is the radius here that we stepped down with 15, 50 micron increments. It's really very nice finish. I'm, I'm very pleased. And the inside wall, as far as I can show it... Oh yeah, there it is. That, that's really okay for a CNC router. Keep in mind, this is not a... a this is not anywhere near a machining center, but for a router that's quite rigid, it adds quite a few possibilities to my shop. Um, hard milling and hard turning is something I'm doing all the time, but hard milling, I do it on my manual mill, but on a, on a CNC controlled mill, you can do really crazy things like, like this radius here. You couldn't do that on a man. Yeah, you can do it on a manual mill in hardened material, but on a CNC, it's really simple. So, I'm keeping this one short. Mm, it's relatively new machine to me. I did a bunch of test cuts now on it. I'm reasonably impressed with the stiffness of this whole contraption. Um, definitely more to come. Uh, I hope that I can that I get work for this machine that I can show. And it's interesting. And then I will probably also show a little bit more cam work. If that's of any interest to you guys. So thank you all for watching and see you next time.